lives. And uh, we feel as though when you do a lot of time in prison, you change and you should be given a second chance. And it's just, I look around and I see that there's a lot of empty seats here. And I've seen in the, uh, one of the uh, articles I was reading, there's over 500 and something people doing life in prison. And this place should be filled up. Yeah. It really should be. And I just pray that you know our sons and daughters and husbands and wives who get another chance. Thank you. My name is Denise Wright, and this is my sister Karen Taylor. Um, my nephew, her son, is a juvenile lifer at Huntington, and we're just. This is, I think this is the second meeting we've been to. We're just trying to find out what's going on and. You know, just be involved. My name is Ben Marshall. I'm a young lawyer. Um, during law school, I worked at a public defender, and right now I'm uh, doing most of the cases. Um, and I'm, I'm interested in learning as much as I can so that I can be, um, you know, someone who fights, you know, 100% for people and is not one of those people, one of those lawyers that, that doesn't do a good job and gives up on Hi, I'm Michael Wiseman. I'm glad I met one first, so I don't have to say I'm a lawyer. Um, but I, I um, uh, recently met uh, William Goldsby and Hakeem and Dan Menton in um, uh, regard to a case I was working on. I was for some information about the community, and I was so pleased to, to, to meet these folks and see the good work they're doing. Just want to come out and see what this was now. Uh, my name is Barbara Fisher. I'm the executive director of an organization called Restored Encounters and a recent Philly Treats plant. Um, we focus on connecting organizations who are advancing restorative practices and values. Specifically, I focus in the criminal justice system after spending 10 years working with former child soldiers overseas. I'm now focused here in the United States with the criminal justice system and specifically entry. Um, I'm a Philly transplant because through my work um, I fell in love with a man who was incarcerated just after his 18th birthday and is now serving a life sentence here in the state of Pennsylvania. So um, I'm excited to get involved with the social movement here and to help advance true justice in the state of Pennsylvania and specifically more here in Testifying 
Uh, and at that penalty case, my face turned red and I was somewhat enraged. And I think if we're not enraged, you're not paying attention. This is an impossible situation. Um, I serve on the advisory board of Reconstruction Incorporated and I'm here to learn more. My name is Anita Colon, and I'm part of Reconstruction and the program later on. Um, I'm also with the Pennsylvania Coalition for Fair Sentencing of Youth and I'm with the board of the Pennsylvania Prison Society. Um, my work is primarily focused around juvenile life without parole and um, due to the fact that I have a brother who uh, was incarcerated on his 16th birthday and has served 23 years of a life sentence so far. Good morning, my name is William Goldsby, and the chair and founder of Reconstruction Incorporated and a co-founder of Fight for Lifers. Um, I'm quite moved to hear the, uh, the personal testimonies and, and, and impressed with uh, Thomas Karima and uh, Sister Kay Harris for allowing the people in the audience to, to say who you are. And that's a beautiful thing. Uh, I have a nephew that's serving 85 years in Washington State, and he did it. Um, and I just like to say one thing and pass it on to whoever's next. Dr. King encouraged us to use soul force. Let's think about that. Let's use soul force and bring these brothers and sisters out. Right. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Sahir Shaheed. Reconstruction, and I had a brother to the suit that's uh, incarcerated all over the state, all over the country. And uh, I myself done time, and I proudly walked the track with some of your husbands, brothers, and sons. I really know them proud, definitely, like I've been to Chester. And it's just like one of my brothers is in another state, he did something very malicious, and he got a chance for parole, and he's home. And in Pennsylvania, it's no parole, but it's life is life, and it's not right. And that's why I'm here, just to support that. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Blessed to be here with you. My name is Reverend Knesset Khan, Chosen People Ministries, Urban Missions. I have 27 years of social services and legal services as an advocate for Justice. I've been working with um, Mr. Goldsby for years, and um, to see everyone that's out, there's something. Um, I work with the social justice uh, groups and with the, um, uh, the lawyers that work with um, lifers, and now I'm with the church. And the whole thing is that we have all uh, outside groups come together, but now the faith-based groups we have to come together. The churches and um, other religious organizations that believe the same way, it's time for us to step up. Um, like um, Mr. Goldsby just said about what Martin Luther King was about, the soul uh, coming together like that. So I want to read this. Um, a 14-year-old in the United States cannot order an alcohol, drink, or purchase cigarettes, cast a ballot, join the army, drive a car, or watch certain movies. And what a 14-year-old can, be sentenced as an adult to life without parole, the possibility of parole. The United States is the only country in the world that sends youth to life without parole. There are over 2,500 people serving life without parole, sentenced for crime committed in their youth. Scientific brain research has proven that youth have different cognitive skills than adults. Youth in adult facilities are 36 times more likely to commit suicide than youth in juvenile facilities. A life without the possibility of parole sentence for you is a guarantee that they will die in prison. We don't want to die in prison. It's time for them to go home. Dios te bendiga and God bless you. Uh, my name is Ron Waldo and uh, I'm here. I'm here, but I have nothing to do with life in Dallas. But I came mostly today because I wanted to meet the uh, political uh, people and invest them and see if they had, I don't want to put everything on them, but I wanted to know if they had any type of plan at all for the black-on-black crime, it's not even murder, it's not so much killing. 
My name is Glenn S. Major, and I'm here for several reasons. But first of all, I want y'all to know I'm an ex offender. I just served 22 years. And I walked the yard with many of y'all brothers, fathers, you know, in, in all the state correctional institutions that I've been to all of them. And I made a promise to the brothers before I was released. And my promise was that I would come out here to make a difference. And the difference that I want to make, I want to see that. Is parole for lifers. There's a lot of lifers in the state correctional institutions in Pennsylvania, a lot of juvenile lifers that have been there since they've been 16, 17, 18. And these guys made decisions at that time that they wasn't even aware of the consequences. And now they've been in jail 25, 30 years. And Pennsylvania law says that you have to die in prison when you have life. Okay, so we need to support all the lifers, the juvenile lifers, and even the brothers that wasn't juveniles when they caught these sentences, that because they had changed, a lot of them has changed. So we need to support them. So as long as I'm on the street and as long as I'm alive, you know, I'm, I'm dedicated to helping ex offenders in the lifers and trying to bring about change for them. And I appreciate everybody that came, and like the brother said, for those that didn't come, they just didn't come. Let's be blessed that what for people we do have here. Because you know, it starts with one. We can make a difference. And it was brought to my attention by a letter I just received from a juvenile life that in Philadelphia, District Attorney Seth Williams is holding up. The Supreme Court came down with a decision that it was unconstitutional to sentence juveniles to life without parole. So What's holding them up from being released? When you say something that's unconstitutional, that means that it was wrong. Okay, so if it was wrong, then why haven't these juveniles been released? The brothers in the penitentiary say that it's just, this attorney said William is fighting that decision. So when we think about voting who we want in office, let's think about that as well. Come on, not there for women. 
um, and alive, that they get a second chance. And we just, you know, support those ones, even when our loved ones do come home, support those that still need if you can. You know, and if not, pass them on to the youth. You know, give them something to look forward to. I'm sure everybody in this city has somebody that's been alive. Some way or some. Just pass them on, pass them on, pass them on. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you once again, I'm Karima. I'm the chair of Fight for Lifers, and I'm here to represent my husband. He's done uh, 17 years on a life sentence. Um, uh, his uncle, Uncle Ronnie, uh, is my uncle. And I just want to thank everyone for coming out. Um, as everyone has said, this is a fight that we all have to do together. And um, I just appreciate you. Uh, my name is Janoa, and um, I'm a part of Reconstruction. I'm also on the um, advisory council. Um, I have a cousin who um, made a very bad, a poor decision um, when she was younger, and um, she was, um, you know, accessory to murder. She thought she could take her uh, cousin to beat up her boyfriend and the tables were turned and um, the boyfriend was killed. But because she was, you know, um, the boyfriend was killed by the cousin. Um, and she got 15 to 20 years. She's in Muncie. And um, it's been a long, long, you know, battle for her. Um, at the time, she had a daughter that was two years old, and when she was incarcerated, she was pregnant. Um, her son was born, you know, in prison. Um, you know, she didn't get a chance to see her daughter graduate from high school. Her son, um, you know, got one well, will be graduating from high school in a few years, and hopefully she will be home. She's been fighting. The family has been fighting. Um, so I know what it's like to have a loved one incarcerated. She is in the 18th year of, you know, her, um, of the 20 years. And every year we look forward, you know, to her coming home. But then when it's time for her to come home, another barrier is put in the way. So, um, we all know that the, you know, the criminal justice, um, it's, it's just so unfair, but um, we'll continue the good fight. So, um, thank you all for coming out today. Good morning, my name is Marilyn Minty, and my son was, was a juvenile. It was 21 years, October 15th, and we all know about the injustice and how many years we've cried, how many days we've cried, how mistreated the families are when we go to visit, and how the CEOs treat us like weird criminals also. Some of them work so hard to turn us away. And to me, it seems like that sometimes when the inmates see their families, it makes their jobs a lot easier. They look for the least little piece of lint. I've had men young enough to be my son, screaming in my face, calling me names, talking to my pregnant daughter, telling us what's going to happen to us physically and what they can do to us. We went through the right channels, we wrote to the right people, and they suspended our visits for a year. They did allow us to see my son, but we were considered inappropriate. Well, if we were inappropriate, why were we allowed to visit? There's cameras everywhere, there's guns everywhere. But you have to pick on a disabled woman and an eight-month pregnant woman, right? The CEOs need to be reevaluated also. I'm Lucinda Hudson, and I am just a part of Reconstruction for the last 100 years. I actually um, I got involved with Reconstruction by Happenstance. And I joined it because I like the mission of what Brother William Rosemary was about. And I came from a long line of racism and issues in North Carolina.
So I said, this is the organization 